Hi, welcome to Fire Engineering Training Minutes. I'm Mike McAvoy, and in this episode, I want to talk about two techniques for controlling severe bleeding, one of them being use of a tourniquet, such as the cat tourniquet, and the other, a hemostatic dressing, such as combat gauze. In our first situation, we have an extremity injury to a firefighter that is clearly an indication for use of a tourniquet. And in this situation, blood is actually pumping out of the injury. And this suggests to us that we should not waste any time in attempting to control the bleeding and go directly to use of a tourniquet. Tourniquets are a great device in situations where time is of the essence, either because there are multiple patients, the situation is hostile, and you don't have time to take extensive maneuvers for controlling bleeding using other mechanisms, or when you confront an injury such as this where there's obvious loss of blood that's significant. One of the things about the cat tourniquet is you should not leave it packaged in its wrapper from the manufacturer. You should have the cat tourniquet unwrapped and ready to use. Now we'll look at application of the tourniquet. Obviously this is significant bleeding. I'll put some gloves on prior to treating the patient. And the tourniquet has already been unwrapped and prepared for use on the patient. It's opened in a wide fashion. I can slide it along the extremity, get it into position where it needs to be. And there are two ways of actually positioning a tourniquet. In the combat casualty care course, it's recommended that the tourniquet be placed high on the extremity because the injury potentially could transect arteries anywhere along the extremity, whether you're dealing with a leg or with an arm. In many state and local protocols, the tourniquet is applied just above the injury itself. In this situation, we'll put the tourniquet high on the arm. Now you notice that it's encircling the arm, has a little red tab that we're gonna pull back and actually tuck through the buckle of the tourniquet. And we'll tighten the tourniquet on the extremity as tight as we can possibly get the tourniquet to begin with. The buckle on the device keeps the tourniquet from actually being able to untighten itself. This little windlass that's attached to the tourniquet now is turned in order to add additional tightness and to occlude arterial blood flow to the extremity. You're tightening this with several turns and actually no more than three turns is recommended by the manufacturer. And then once the tourniquet is tightened to the degree that blood stops flowing and there's no evidence of additional bleeding, you secure the tourniquet windlass inside the holder on the top and place the white Velcro on top of it. It's then held in place by the little latch. The rest of the tourniquet can be brought around the arm and actually secured to prevent the windlass from unraveling itself. Now, tourniquets cause a great deal of pain, and tightening this three or more times on a patient is gonna cause enough pain that every patient who has a tourniquet is gonna require some analgesia. In situations such as this, one of my preferences is to use some fentanyl in an intranasal device that you can atomize into the patient's nose. That's a very good way of providing some analgesia. It's impossible to keep a tourniquet on a patient for any extended period of time without giving them some analgesia. Many injuries will not have the bleeding controlled with a single tourniquet. So it's important to have a second tourniquet available. If this tourniquet was not to control the bleeding, which happens in 10 to 20 percent of instances when a tourniquet is applied, we would put a second tourniquet on the extremity. If we had this tourniquet applied at the top of the extremity, very proximal, we would apply another tourniquet below it. If we had it applied just above the wound, we would apply a second tourniquet above the first tourniquet. Most bleeding will be controlled with the application of two tourniquets. There certainly is no need uh, to use pressure dressings and other things to control the bleeding, but there is obviously no harm in doing things that you would normally do to treat pain for a patient, such as elevating the extremity, perhaps applying some cold to the injury. In our next episode, I'll talk about use of combat gauze, a hemostatic agent, to control severe bleeding in the central part of the body. I'm Mike McAvoy. Thanks for watching.